So what you're looking at here is my conversion work on a pair of snotlings to be assistants for the winch operation uh, for the orc board elevator. If you're not familiar with this description, uh, you should go back to my orc display board playlist and see uh, all of the videos that are in it. But what I've done is I've selected a snotling that has uh, a holding a club and his hand position works pretty well for holding a rope. Uh, and he's going to be an assistant to the main snotling who will be pulling on the rope. And so what you see uh, is me removing the club and beginning to clean out the material in between his hands so that it will fit a rope. Now, uh, I'm using my Dremel for this. Um, and uh, I'm using the smallest bits that I have, and those bits are fantastic, and they've really been holding up quite well uh, with regards to staying sharp, even working uh, in the pewter. I've done many, many hours of work, and uh, they've been doing great. In fact, the conversion for this snotling took perhaps as much as uh, five hours, and um, about a third of that was uh, general removal of uh, the material uh, about a third of it was opening and remove and separating the uh, lower uh, hand if he's facing you that would be the right hand which is lower and then about a third of that time is trying to free his thumb uh, which is probably uh, not the best use of my time it's the kind of thing that uh, nobody will see and I'll never get paid for but uh, it's the tiny detail that I just feel compelled to try to implement. So uh, what I've been doing is uh, right here, you can see me uh, cleaning out that material. And I'm going to show you a couple clips in normal speed uh, so that you can get a better sense of exactly how this work looks. But I'm using uh, the round bit uh, Dremel. Uh, to get in the bulk material. And here you see me using the long uh, tapered bit. This bit has a super precision point on it, which is fantastic for doing this kind of line work where I'm really trying to just pull away the hand without uh, removing as much material as I can to preserve the shape of the body and as well as the shape of the hand. There are some problems with using this bit and I'll talk about that a little bit later. While I'm doing some of that work, I just want to mention that, uh, and it might be noticeable maybe in a couple of these shots, but I'm using the flex shaft on my Dremel and the uh, universal uh, bit chuck or drill chuck, whatever it is. And I've had that uh, chuck for my Dremel bits for uh, years, actually, maybe seven years or more. <clears throat> and the chuck actually has uh, gotten some gunk in it and that has been uh, preventing the Dremel tips from actually centering perfectly so they've had a tiny wobble in them and most of the time for a lot of large-scale work you might not notice that but I started to notice it was a problem as I was doing this work and I ended up spending probably 40 minutes taking the chuck apart and cleaning it, which was uh, not easy uh, because it's not, you can't really access some of the interior. But once I did that, uh, I was able to get a really nice uh, precision movement for the uh, Dremel tips bits, and uh, that was making the work a little bit better. Uh, so you just saw a little bit of uh, normal time uh, cleaning, and um, here I've gone back in. So one of the challenges in doing this work is trying to clean out the hands without destroying them and to when needed free them from the body and the uh, 
hand, the upper hand there on the left if he's facing you. Uh, actually, I don't really need to uh, do much except to open it up so that it will uh, accommodate the rope in a reasonably tight manner. I didn't uh, need in my mind to change the thumb on him on that hand because um, he's, he's sort of slackly going to be holding that end of the rope. And you'll see that later as the project progresses. But this hand in the back here, um, I really wanted to free the thumb up and it's got a, a, a pretty broad join to the um, to the body where the thumb is and that made removing of it extremely difficult and here you see me finally breaking out a zacto blade i've removed as much material as i can and now it's time to uh, try to get in there with a little more precision and separate it i try not to use the zacto blade whenever i can because it's sort of a gross implement in terms of um, you know fine fine movement uh, through the pewter but it really needed to happen at this stage now you've probably been noticing on my thumb I've got some kind of a of a injury uh, my next to my nail there that is actually from working on another snotling with a different bit and um, the snotling and the bit bound together and spun and uh, struck my thumb that was probably the worst Dremel incident uh, injury I've ever had uh, but you may be you know thinking oh my god look at him uh, pushing on that uh, you know with the zacto blade right up against his fingers uh, that you know there's really no other way to get enough pressure in enough of these areas uh, I tried you know setting it down and I'm always looking for what's the least attacking way towards my fingers but now you can see um, on my first knuckle on my index finger that I I did end up cutting my finger uh, not too badly but uh, the, the the zacto blade actually slipped and uh, that was uh, a problem um, if you notice on his fingers as I'm turning it here that his the lower uh, portions of his finger have been um, ground off on that hand that was from using that pointed Dremel bit and that uh, you know right there you can see it right next to my uh, Zacto blade tip and that was from using that large uh, but very pointed Dremel bit and because the the binding uh, not the binding the um, cutting surface extends up the shaft a bit I leaned it up against his hand by accident while I was working on the other hand and uh, then I said um, fuck about uh, 15 times because that's not an easy fix and uh, that was I was pretty pissed off about that actually pretty pretty pissed off at myself for not noticing it um, you know that that bit uh, actually requires a really really high level of, of maintenance this bit I'm using right here uh, because you you just have to pay attention to the upper part of that shaft and make sure it's not hitting uh, any other areas that you don't want it to strike so here I'm doing um, a little bit more cleaning um, and here I'm opening up that hand a little bit more um, I'm finally getting it pretty close to being able to uh, have it hold the rope. This kind of hand is kind of a pleasure to work on because uh, it's pretty easy to remove material and I'm not going to have to reshape it or move it. Uh, there was another snotling I did for this pair where I did a massive massive conversion on his hands and his arms a lot of bending a lot of material removal uh, and that took uh, quite a while uh, so here i am starting to work on that thumb i really wanted that thumb to uh, open up so he could grip the rope uh, with a normal hand position and getting that thumb to free up was really challenging because it's so tightly bound to the other fingers uh, it's not a very thick piece of metal to free and so there's a risk of uh, you know 
over, you know, doing it on um, removing material to help it move away from the hand. Uh, there's a risk of uh, breaking it when you're trying to reshape it. Uh, so it, uh, not, not a, an easy task. I actually started to get pretty frustrated towards the end because it was taking me so long and, uh, I don't know, sort of an in for a penny in for a pound kind of idea. So here I'm trying to pry the thumb open and right at this point, I broke the thumb and uh, it didn't pop right off. It has a has a, a hinge on it so that, oh, I haven't broken it yet, I think, I'm, I'm about to. Um, so that was another round of profanity and uh, not, not too, oh, here we go. I'm about to break it right here. Yep, so um, another step back and another round of fucks. And then uh, there you see me, I'm actually applying some uh, super glue to the thumb to try to keep it from falling off. It's, it's not in a bad position the way it is. And I can move the fingers of the hand um, a little bit easier now that it's a little thinner so I can sort of leave the thumb where it is. You can actually see the break if you look closely next to where the Dremel tip is. Um, now here, after having you know pretty much done all the handwork, I'm going in and cleaning up the body and the first thing I needed to do was to, um, well, not the first, I think the most important, well, it's not the most important. Anyway, I'm actually reshaping his loincloth uh, because the club went across his waist. Uh, it was, you know, there was no real loincloth there per se, uh, those edges. So uh, having removed all that material, I need to redefine it. So I'm sort of uh, carving in uh, the, the, edge of the cloth and uh, this tool is you know this this fine fine point it's really fantastic for that you can really draw a nice sharp line uh, and you can see me here working at normal speed uh, doing that work and having uh, redefine the cloth I'm going in um, and I'm cleaning up some of the areas that have flash or mold lines and some of the areas that I damaged it, it's really very very hard to not scrape some areas of the miniature while you're uh, doing some of this work so some of that is going in and cleaning up some of those scratches and little nicks and little dings um, the fingers on the the hand that I ground down are not easily fixable but i was able to clean them up a little bit so that that damage wasn't quite as noticeable um, and here you see me working on those fingers rather than uh, touching the thumb to uh, open it up and uh, make sure it can accommodate the uh, rope uh, there you can see me opening it up a little bit because the rope that it's holding is actually pretty thick um, and there you can see that rope there um, and you see me fitting it into his hand so uh, that wraps up this uh, snotling conversion video i uh, hope you enjoyed it uh, of course feel free to um, hit like or subscribe and uh, don't forget if you're interested in um, supporting me on patreon you can do that i have uh, monthly columns up there that are publicly viewable for everybody and you might find those uh, helpful to check out uh, well, the posts are tagged now, so they're much easier to find. You'll see tags on the left-hand side of the Patreon uh, post page. And clicking on those will take you to the monthly columns and the other posts that are there. And I have some uh, patron-only posts examples as well. So if you're not a patron, you can get a little sense of uh, what kinds of extra posts I put up. Uh, but it's a small sample of what is otherwise a very large assortment. So thanks for joining me. And hopefully you'll come back for the next video, uh, because you know that I will be back soon with another Terranscapes video.